Okay, hey guys, what's happening? You're listening to In the Meantime with Timmy Riggs, where I am truly focusing on helping myself and other people uh, work to uh, live a life that's fulfilling, joyful, and peaceful, right? Covering all the major six components of our life, uh, whether that is our spiritual, mental, physical, relational, financial, and vocational. Uh, connecting all of those to our faith and how God wants to, to help us live a life that's abundant, that's beyond anything we can imagine, right? If he says it in scripture, then shoot, I'm going to believe for it. And uh kind of just lean into that's how God wants me to live my life, right? That I want to think about things that are praiseworthy and excellent and lovely and true and genuine. And it's like, man, I want my life to be on that track. I want to run that race. So that's me starting hot right off the bat. So today, this is a, a little midweek motivator, I like to call it, because it's just this idea of, hey, um, there's a lot of stuff out there that is going to remind you that stuff's not great. That life is uh, tough and is hard, and sometimes it's good to kind of be like, oh yeah, those things are happening. On the flip side, um, there's not a ton of encouragement. So that's where I feel my calling is, where my uh, giftings are, is that are in the area of saying, hey, let's, let's help all of us be inspired. Let's help us be encouraged. So today, um, I'm going to read a little scripture, actually, and maybe this is new for you. you. You don't read scripture. You don't listen to scripture very often. So here's a couple verses for you to get into your bones, into your life, and uh, it's in the book of Romans. A guy named Paul wrote this. This guy, Paul, he used to be a bad guy. He was killing Christians. Jesus said, hey, I want you on my team. I want you to be the quarterback. And sure enough, uh, the movement of Christianity began, and Paul was the quarterback for sure. Uh, he helped it happen. And so he says something that's pretty interesting. He says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to to his purpose. Today, I want to talk to you about what do you do if the good feels like it's run out, right? I remember 2019. That was a, a top shelf year for me. An amazing year. I did a ton of trips. I uh, went to the beach multiple times. That's my love language. Take me to the beach and I'll be happy. You're going to get the best from me at the beach, right? And so we went to the beach a couple times. Um, I went to a conference with some of my closest friends, and uh, we grew and just had a ton of fun there. My wife was involved in pretty much all of these moments. Um, at the time, I was a pastor at a pretty good-sized church, uh, and I was entrusted to preach on Sunday morning um, three times in the summer because uh, my pastor was on a sabbatical, a, a seven-week-long vacation that he deserved. And so he uh, entrusted me with another pastor to kind of lead us through some sermons. That was my first time preaching on what you'd call the big Sundays um, for the whole congregation. That was incredible. It uh, empowered me. It encouraged me. made me feel like, hey, this is the direction I want my life to go. I did a 56-mile uh, hike with uh, two of my best friends, and that was crazy. It was five days in the backwoods of Glacier National Park, one of the hardest things I've ever done, but one of the most rewarding, and uh, that, there was no cell phone service or anything, right? Um, my wife and I, we knew that was going to be our last year before we started trying to have kids, so now we would never trade having our little girl, but... Uh, you know, there's things you get to do when you don't have kids. And so we said, well, let's lean into that. And we did. It was such a great year. Okay. So 2019 ended and then 2020 showed up. And like everybody else, it was a lot harder year. There was a lot of challenges. Uh, there was a lot of disappointments. There was just things I didn't expect to have happened that happened. Uh, and then all the COVID stuff. And so this isn't me talking about COVID. I'm tired of people talking about it. It's just an example of, man, 2019, it seemed like God was like, I got you, right? This is your year. I'm going to just give you all these good things. And it felt that way. And then 2020 showed up and it was like, God, did you use up all your goodness on me in one year? Because I would love if maybe we could stretch it out, right? <laughs> That's exactly how it felt. So what do we do when we feel like, man, I'm called to a life beyond. I, uh, I want a more adventurous, wonderful, exciting, maybe scratching the surface of extraordinary type of life. But I'm going to be honest, I have been in a season where I feel like the goodness is gone. That maybe if God has a bucket of goodness, he slipped as he was pouring it out and it, it slipped out of his hands and all that goodness came out at once. And he's just like, sorry, 
there's no more goodness, right? And, and what, what do we do? Because we see this scripture where it says, man, like God wants to do good things for you. He works for the good of those who love him. And so if we find ourselves in a season where there is no good, maybe we're like, did I mess up? Did I do something wrong? Um, and then maybe we'll look at this scripture a little bit more. And maybe if you, you aren't on this side of spirituality and you're like, I've never heard that verse and I don't really think that way, but I'm also missing out on goodness. Like, don't give up on the rest of this podcast. I want to talk about that as well, um, because at the end of the day, I believe that God loves you and he wants good things to happen in your life. Right. So if you're a Christian, you can start to think like, OK, well, let me do a little diagnosis. Let me figure out why it seems like God's goodness has run out on me. Right. So we look back at the passage and we see that it says God works for the good. So we're like, sweet, I, I want that good in my life. And the second part of it says of those who love him. God works for the good of those who love him. So then we're like, okay, great, God. You put it back into my control because now it's according, the goodness that I get from you is according to the way that I love you and that I prove that I love you and that I show you that I love you. And the last part of the passage says, for those who've been called according to his purpose. And so if you're in any type of work where you're like, man, I do feel called to, to preach the kingdom, to share the gospel with other people, like, and maybe it's not even in your regular job, it's just your life, then you're like, I feel called to this. The goodness has run out, maybe, season of where things aren't so good. So maybe I need to do better at showing God that I love him. And so what do we do? We roll up our sleeves. And we figure out, okay, maybe there's a little bit more work I can start putting in, right? Maybe I can start uh, reading more scripture. Maybe I should start being at church a little bit more. Maybe I should get into another small group. Maybe I should uh, volunteer a little bit more and only listen to Christian music. I want to do things that prove to God that I love him. So I'm not going to watch Yellowstone like all those other sinners. I'm going to lean into him and I'm going to cancel Netflix and subscribe to Pure Flix. But then it doesn't take long before we start doing those things and you're just going to get to the point where you're like, oh, I am exhausted. I'm so tired of trying to prove my love to God. And maybe it doesn't seem like anything else is getting any better, right? And we just feel like the only good that we get from God is a good luck. Good luck. I'm here, but I mean, you got to figure it out on yourself, right? So we get to this spot, maybe hopefully this is the spot we need to get to, where we just say to God, hey, I'm tired. I don't think that I can do this. I I'm not sure that I know how to approve my love to you. And I believe at that point, that's when God goes, man, that's great. And you're like, wait, what? What's that mean? He's like, yeah, no, um, you kind of missed it. That was never really the point. You, you can't prove your love to me. You're, you're a human being. I'm an infinite God that created all the universes that we know and don't know, right? Like, listen, you, you are always going to come short in that pursuit. And it's like, yeah, but God, it says for those who love you. He's like, yeah, yeah, I, I want you to love me and be in relationship with me. But, but that's not the root of my goodness for your life. What the root is and really how you return your love for God is by recognizing that it's all about his love for you, Right. So what does that mean? Well, there's a scripture that tells us that that it was God's love for us that even gives us the ability to love him. It, it was what he did for us that allows us to lean into him. So, so what does God want us to do? It's not about proving our love to him. Instead, he's just saying, no, I just want you to lean into my love. That's the best way that you show me that you love me is to recognize what I have done for you. So a couple examples of this is Jesus is given a story one time. Uh, it's called the story of the prodigal son. You, you've probably heard it, right? Where this son decides that, man, he wants to do his own thing. He wants to be the captain of his ship, uh, the CEO of his life, and he feels like he knows better than his dad. So he goes to his dad and he says, hey, I want my inheritance. I want it in full. I want everything that's supposed to be mine. And the dad gives it to him, which is, I mean, that's already crazy. The son goes out and he starts to live a life where he just spoils it all, right? Uh, wild living and he uses all his wealth to where he has nothing. At one point he's working in a pig pen and that's all he can eat is just the slops left over by the pigs. And so he gets to this place in his life where he says, man, even the servants at my father's house, they live a much better life than me. 
And so maybe if I get this speech together and he starts getting the speech about, hey, dad, I messed up. I'm a failure. Like I should have never done this. If you will just give me the grace, just the ability to just be a servant in your home, I won't leave again and I will serve you. Right. And so scripture says as as the son was running back to his dad's house, that the father was basically on the porch looking out in the horizon, trying to find where his son was just in case maybe this was the day that he was coming home. And sure enough, that is the day. And the Bible says that the father takes off and starts running towards his son. And in that moment, the son is like, okay, this is it. This is where I'm going to prove to my dad that I love him. And I'm going to maybe inspire him with the speech. And he'll just let me be a servant. And as they kind of meet together, uh, the son starts in on his speech. And the father simply ignores him, wraps his arms around him, tells the other people to bring a robe and, and to get his son cleaned up. Because why? Jesus is helping us understand that the father just cares about being in the presence with the son. He doesn't care about what the son can do for him. He's just saying, hey, I love you so much. I just want you to be around me, and I want you to realize how much I love you. And there's a second story uh, about these sisters, Mary and Martha, right? And Jesus goes to their house one day, and he's talking to everybody in the living room. He's just chilled, you know, got his reclined, whatever. And, and he's telling them just all these great stories and, and inspiring them. And, and Mary's just sitting at his feet. And Martha is grinding in the kitchen, right? She's grinding for God, which is what we try to do when we try to get back into his goodness. And she's in there working, and she starts getting mad, as you do, right? When you're the only one working in the kitchen and everyone else is sitting there watching football or listening to the words of Jesus. Uh, and so Martha comes out and says, Jesus, I got a complaint. Um, Mary's not pulling her weight around here. And I could use some help, and she's not really doing anything that matters. And Jesus looks at Martha, and he says, Oh, Martha, you are distracted by a lot of things. Few things are really needed. In fact, only one. And Mary has chosen that, and it will not be taken away from her. What is Jesus saying? Hey, there is always things that can be done. The most important thing I want you to understand is to just be connected with me, to be in my presence. When it comes to receiving good from God and stepping into uh, the goodness that we believe that he has offered us, usually it's not about us proving anything to him. It's just recognizing like, man, I'm alive. I got breath in my lungs. I got blood flowing through thousands of miles of veins in my body, and I didn't do anything for it. God just gave me this life. He let me borrow his breath. And all he wants is for me to raise my awareness to the fact that he's in control, that he's got it, that he wants to do good things for me, not because of the good I do for him, but out of sheer love for me and for you. And I think about my own kid, my, my little girl, she's 18 months old. She's done nothing for me. She, in the sense of production, right? She is not helping economically in the house. We've all heard this before, right? She's, she's not going grocery shopping. She's not making sure the doors are locked at nighttime. She's not making sure the bills are paid. Uh, she doesn't even make her own food. We just sit her down in her seat and she eats it. And, and, and yet, like, I don't expect anything from her. Because for me, man, I just want to be around her. I just want to love on her and kiss her and encourage her and to help her grow up. And that's enough for me. That's all I want is for her to be right there. There's nothing she has to try to prove, right? She is my daughter by birth, not by worth. And that is exactly what God wants us to understand. That it is by birth, recognizing, man, we are children of God. And he is just wanting to pour his love on uh, so are there bad times in life? Are there tough times? Absolutely. Does that mean that God's goodness is gone? Absolutely not. It will continue. And God is saying, hey, just like the psalm scripture says, be still and know that I'm God. Rest in my love. Rest in the fact that you are valuable beyond any type of accomplishment or accolade or status that you can attain. I just want you to be connected with me. And Jesus goes on and he says, hey, if you earthly fathers know how to good, give good gifts, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to you? So if you're in a season where you're thinking, man, can anything good happen in my life? I, I just want you to take a deep breath and maybe 
focus less on your own production. There's a time to produce. There is a time to work. There's a time to give our best efforts. But when it comes to recognizing our value to God and the way that God wants to bless us, man, it, it's not connected to those things. It's connected only to the fact that he first loved us. And his desire is that he is passionate about us recognizing there's no way to earn it. All we have to do is just sit in it and receive it. And so I hope in some type of way this can encourage you. And again, if you're like, man, I, I don't know where I'm at on the God thing. I get it. Um, but, but I would say, what if you spent 10, 15, 20, 30 days each day trying to raise your awareness of God? I'm not talking about dogmas or things that you thought you were taught or things that made you leave the church or whatever. But I'm talking about like stepping outside and looking at the clouds and the sky and the birds and the grass and being like, man, those things are just there and they're beautiful. Like eliminate some of the distractions and focus on the one thing that's needed. Recognizing that, man, I am here and I just, I can't, I can't see it as an accident. I think that there's purpose for me. And I think that there's a way I can impact other people and I can love people and encourage them. And, and in that, there's going to be this weird uh, kind of reciprocity that comes back. And, and that's God's way of saying, man, I, I just love you so much. And it's not connected to how hard you're working. It's just connected to you. And so with that being said, in the meantime, we are going to expect and believe for good things because that's what a good dad does. He just says, hey, I just want to give good gifts to my kid. And so with all that being said, I hope you're doing well, and I hope that this can encourage you in some type of way. If it did, I'd love for you to pass it on, share it with a friend. Um, begin to flip the perspective. Good things are on the horizon. It's not just positive self-help talk. It's not just prosperity gospel stuff. You can call it whatever you want, but it's just the fact that that's what Scripture seems to point towards that there is a God that loves us, and I have an experience in my life that I feel like has proven that. And so lean into that. Okay, well, that's it for this uh, midweek motivator. Uh, like always, you can find me in different platforms on Instagram, Facebook. Um, my podcast are on, uh, what do we got, Spotify and iTunes. Uh, you can go to my website, timmyriggs.com. You can subscribe to where I write a blog just one a week usually just about trying to say hey here's some things that can maybe help you wherever you're at because our goal is to live a fulfilling wonderful joyful peaceful life and there's so many ways to do it so hope you have a great day in the meantime god is rooting for you and so am i